Paul standards. This right here is a mini display port cable, and this right here is a fun. cable, but they look the same. This USB Type-C port is running at USB 2.0 speeds. This one is USB 3, which can be 10 or even 20 times the speed. And this one is Thunderbolt 3, which is faster still and comes with a host of other capabilities. So backing up then, because most cables are just a physical, electrically conductive wire connecting point A to point B. Nothing would prevent a, you know, piece of coat hanger from connecting between a receiver and a home theater speaker. Or, let's say, an Ethernet cable from being used to carry an HDMI digital video signal. In fact, that product exists. Okay, but back to computer drives again. M.2 is one of several physical connector standards that allows an SSD to be attached internally to your computer. This motherboard right here conveniently gives us a great example of all of them. So what you're looking at right now is SATA or serial ATA. This connector suffers from more latency because of its indirect connection to the CPU. Right here is the basically dead SATA Express standard that uses two PCIe lanes, which are better because they're connected more directly to the CPU, but has a very bulky connector and no drive support to speak of. This one right here is U.2, which uses four PCIe lanes, twice as many as SATA Express, but has all but disappeared outside the enterprise space and finally, this one right here is M.2, which has basically won out versus the other next-gen connectors at this point, thanks to its performance. It also uses a maximum of four PCIe lanes, as well as its compact form factor that allows it to be used not just for desktops, but also for ultra-thin notebooks. But, and getting back to the whole lesson on protocol versus physical standards, most of these physical connections support multiple protocols. That is to say, more than one way for the computer to communicate with the drive's controller over the physical wires. And if you aren't using an NVMe protocol drive in your M.2 slot, you might not be getting the full experience. So, if your computer has a PCIe M.2 slot, and you can see the difference here between an NVMe capable one and an AHCI only one here, they're usually labeled, then it's simple. You just plug it in, maybe configure a couple settings in the BIOS, and poof, it's off to the races. But then what if you don't have a PCI Express M.2 slot on your motherboard? Okay, well step one, Make sure you don't have one. Some motherboards even hide this connector on the back, and it's small enough that it can be pretty easy to miss. Then, step two, ensure that your motherboard actually supports booting to an NVMe drive. In general, anything Z97 or X99 chipset and newer will have that support. And if it does, and you still want to use a drive, then you want to pick up one of these little guys. These cards plug into a PCIe slot on your motherboard, just like a video card, sound card, etc. Consult your motherboard's manual to find out how many lanes each slot has and what speeds they operate at. More is better. And I've got a couple different versions here. Silverstone has an NVMe only one and one that supports both an NVMe and AHCI, remember that's the same protocol as SATA, over a slightly different M.2 connector, that are reasonably priced. Then there are more premium options, like the Wings from Angelbird, that looks a little cooler and includes a thermal shield and pad to keep the drive from overheating. We're going to use this SP500 Fizen controller-based NVMe SSD from Corsair for our demo here. Once everything is hooked up, 
You can move the mounting screw around depending on the length of your NDME drive. And then you just need to make sure you're running the latest UEFI BIOS on your board and go through the same steps as our previous board that supported it natively. Going back further than the last couple generations of boards, things get a little dicey. Theoretically, all the way back to P67 days, you can install an NVMe SSD in one of these PCI Express cards just like this. But you won't get the full benefit unless it's a newer one because you won't actually be able to boot from the drive. And right now, NVMe drives are a little bit too expensive for most people to want to use them as a Steam library. And there is yet another wrench to throw in the spokes of this whole ordeal. While the connector on the motherboard may be capable of both NVMe and AHCI operation, I'm not aware of any NVMe M.2 drives that will work across either protocol. So if you have an NVMe board, you want to get an NVMe drive, or maybe you could run an AHCI one, and if you have an AHCI only M.2 slot, then you will need an AHCI so more protocol overhead, SSD, just like this one, and don't expect to get earth-shattering performance out of it. We are working with Rockcast! To give away their cross headsets, designed for multi-platform, multi-use, multi-purpose use on multi-platforms. Some of its features include large 50 millimeter neodymium magnet drivers, it comes with dual microphones, one designated for PC and one designated for mobile. The mics are detachable and plug into a port on the underside of the left ear cup, and they've got quick access volume controls, memory foam ear pads, a light 185 gram profile, and to enter, all you need to do is watch this video and enter through the link in the video description. The giveaway will run for seven days from today. Seven days, so move fast. So I hope that clears things up and you guys have a better understanding of M.2 now. I sure do, because I had to do all this research to make this video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you just like this video, hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out where to buy the drives or accessories we featured at Amazon at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store where you can buy cool shirts like this one. Or our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all those things, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So check out our latest video right there over on Channel Super Fun. I think it's like RC car bowling or some nonsense like that. Okay, welcome to the WAN Show for real, suckas. At least that's what we... At the end of the Japanese Fuji TV broadcast of Dragon Ball Super Episode 75, they treated us to a little 15 second preview of the Universal Survival Arc, and this preview has the random flipping shit at the fact that we saw a plethora of new gods and angels and guys. But the big one that everyone's talking about is this female Super Saiyan, which really, really, really looks like Broly. A lot of you guys have hit me up on social media. Yeah, let's just go ahead and talk about it. Greetings, everyone. So, here, subscribe to this perfect chat and follow Geek on the social media platform. That will be all. Now, the first thing I want to say is that we only have a very small sample of this character. Literally, like, a few frames. It's like, God, like, just a few seconds of the character. So I am going to make this video short and sweet. A lot of people have been tweeting at me and commenting and asking about this. Well, first and foremost, 
He's only a movie character. He's not in the anime or the manga. And Broly was not created by Akira Toriyama. I did an entire history of Broly video where I covered his entire life. I will link you guys to that video at the end of this one so you can check that out. And I covered the creation of the character and kind of his roots and where he came from. But I digress. Some people have been saying that maybe she is Broly's sister or something like that. I don't think that's the case either. However, one thing that is very possible and very plausible, and I'm going to go ahead and say it probably is likely, is that she is from Planet Sadal, which is the Saiyan homeworld over in Universe 6. But remember, the universes are twin universes, but they're not identical, meaning that there are differences between the two universes. Because there is no planet Vegeta, then that means there is no alternate universe version of Goku or Vegeta or even Broly. Regardless of what you think about his canon, he cannot exist. She is a brand new character. Now, one thing we definitely have to keep in mind about her is that this is the first female Super Saiyan we have ever seen in the anime or in the manga. Other forms of Dragon Ball media like fan manga and Dragon Ball Heroes and several video games have already shown us female Super Saiyans, uh, especially Dragon Ball Heroes. They really show a lot of female Super Saiyans there, but this is the first time we've seen it in an actual officially licensed Toei anime, and that's very exciting because I know a lot of people have been waiting to see that, and now we see it. And it looks like the girl is pretty timid in her face for, but she seems to have like an incredible hope and grows his muscles and she also has the same hairstyle and bracelet without question she resembles Broly you can't deny that and I think this is Toei pretty much paying an homage to Broly and recognizing that a lot of Enemy people slain. like not just Broly but big strong muscular characters they pretty much in a weird way semi clickbaited this arc but hey Toei knows how to make money with Dragon Ball and I know a lot of people who gave up on Super are probably going to come back now, another frequently asked question is the whole legendary Super Saiyan. Now, that is an official transformation in the guidebooks, but that transformation's only in the movies. It's never in the manga anime. It's nowhere to be found. It's just part of that. Some folks are asking, is she the legendary Super Saiyan of Universe 6? Well, I can't sit here and tell you that she is because as far as Dragon Ball lore goes in the main continuity, such a thing does not really exist, at least when it comes to that transformation anyways. But with the green aura and the green hair, the transformation certainly resembles it. And it wouldn't be the first time that Dragon Ball Super has taken something from outside of the main manga and anime and thrown it in. Those of you who remember the final Kamehameha was only a video game exclusive technique and we saw it in the Future Trunk Saga. So if we are going to be open-minded, we have to remember that, yes, they might actually make the legendary Super Saiyan form part of the main storyline. So I think this is a brilliant move by Toei because for years people have wanted Broly to be part of the main storyline and they've wanted a female Super Saiyan, so guess what? Toei, Toriyama, whoever's behind this idea said, screw it, let's consolidate it and put it in Super. Now, if you're wondering how strong she is, I mean, obviously, no question we cannot answer at this time, but I wanted to make this video to address some of the questions people have. You have to remember, forget canon, non canon, and all that stuff. I'm guessing what they're doing here, and you're talking to a guy who's studied Dragon Ball for years. Is that this character is going to have similar properties to Broly as far as looks and probably devastating power, but I don't think there's any relation with her and Broly. I think it's just an homage to the character Broly. Really Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments down below as far as your thoughts on this character. I know some people have been really upset they're doing this. Who looks a lot like Broly, alright? That's pretty much what it is. I look forward to seeing what she looks like in the next arc in the coming weeks. So, thank you so much for watching the video. And if you like this video, check out more videos that I've done about Broly. I've got several Broly videos that I've done on my channel, examining the character and discussion, including the history of Broly. Long video where I go into the entire story of the character. Check those out right here.
ラたちの生き残りをかけた本気のバトル見てくれドラゴンボールスーパー宇宙サバイバル編2月5日スタート絶対見てくれよな You just witnessed the official high definition trailer for the next arc of Dragon Ball Super. So let your friends know on Facebook. Share this with your friends. Let them know that this is the high definition quality trailer. Now, did you notice that the God of Destruction best was not in the trailer at all? But we also noticed something. We realized that the angel that's next to this God of Destruction best, that is not the angel or the attendant of that God of Destruction. If you analyze their clothes, you can tell by the shapes that the angel, or the, the attendant, does not represent the God of Destruction best. But instead, he represents the God of Destruction that looks like a fox. And you can tell by analyzing their clothing. And we actually find out the identity of this fox. We're going to be doing a video later this week. But let me know in the comments below, why is the attendant of the fox? Why is he hanging out with a different God of Destruction from a different universe? What is going on and where in the world is the attendant or the angel of the God of Destruction best? Let me know in the comments below. But anyways, thanks to you guys on Snapchat and on Discord, we have the identity of this elephant looking God of Destruction. And I'm going to be doing an in-depth analysis as to the history and how that plays into effect on the series. But let's continue. A lot of people were talking about this clown and uh, his his angel saying that oh that's the Joker and that's Harley Quinn and you know what it kind of makes sense if you're thinking it from the perspective of Westerners but that is not who they represent this clown is representing a different deity and I will be doing a video breaking down the identity of this clown not of his angel but of the clown and we also have a theory as to where this character on the left where he comes from and who he could potentially be so guys keep an eye out this week because we have some amazing videos coming out now on the far right side we have an idea of who he is but i want you guys to tell me in the comments below who do you think that is from mythology and now in the middle